Welcome to Risk Engineers Talk Governance. In this episode, due diligence engineers Richard Robinson and Gay Francis discuss nuclear power safety, especially in relation to Finland and how they focus on getting it right before proceeding. Please enjoy their chat. And if you do, please give us a rating. Also, don't forget to subscribe on your favourite podcast platform. If you have any comments or topic ideas, please get in touch via admin at r2a.com.au. Welcome, Gay, um, to your session on nuclear safety. Oh, thank you, Richard. <laughs> now, the reason why we're doing this is that a long time ago, or perhaps a short time ago, depending on how you look at these things, <laughs> Gay was an exchange student to Finland. And she, one of her host fathers was, in fact, the safety... Manager. Manager for the Oliaki. You'd better pronounce it more correctly. <laughs> Okiloto. Okiloto power station, which is a nuclear power station in Finland. Now, um, interestingly, goes taking her whole family, husband and two kids, to on a holiday to Finland, and she's going to go to the the host family uh, because they've been keeping communication ever since. And her daughters apparently deserve to see a real Christmas in Finland, which is about as chill as you're going to get. Hoping for a white Christmas, Richard. And really peculiarity, we're just doing some work for Tasports, and it turns out that Tasports are having their two new ferries built at, I can't remember the, how you pronounce that exactly. Rauma. Rauma, which is a town of about 5,000 people or something. It's not a big place. And you're actually staying where they're building the ferries for Tasmania, <laughs> which is even more peculiar. So yes, Finland's not a very big place, but they do some pretty... Pretty heavy lifting in industrial well, terms. Well, more than that, just in educational terms, Finland's one of those remarkable places where teachers have, for example, have a very high standing. They do. Very high status. And uh, university, uh, if you qualify, it doesn't matter where on the planet you are, if you qualify, you can be educated there free, but you have to obviously achieve the academic standard that Finns expect of you. And they just find that that approach to life actually substantially enhances the way in which people look at them in the world. I've also been advised because there was an interesting sort of holiday trip going from up the Gulf of Bothnia to St Petersburg a while back and I made some passer remark and Gay just looked at me blankly and said, Finns do not holiday in Russia. They do not holiday in Russia. That is definitely <laughs> right. I'm sure that's probably been reinforced in recent times. Mm. Um, so back to the topic. <laughs> so one of the interesting things that I, I and I gave a presentation probably 2015, so a number of years ago, and it was when the nuclear power debate was happening in Australia and I sort of said to Richard, I don't understand, you know, the Finns have had nuclear power for a long time ago, as he said, I went on exchange and that was 1990 that I went on exchange, so, you know, during high school. So the Finns have had nuclear power for a very long time and been able to manage it. and um, But they actually do it better than that because they're one of the few places that actually decide that they're going to manage their own nuclear waste. They do, and that's what I, I think one of the, the key things that for me it is, is they really have a whole-of-life um, appreciation of nuclear power. So their main research area is actually where to put the spent fuel rods um, and, and how they're going to store that and manage that um, in, in years to come. So um, Okiloto is on the west coast of Finland, quite down south, um, about four hours from Helsinki, and that's and I stayed in a little town called Erioki, and it's in the municipality of Erioki. And um, the community are definitely aware of the nuclear power station in their um, in, in their their community, and they actually lobby for it. Um, one of the interesting things was. Uh, and we've talked about stakeholders and interested parties before. The community is definitely a key stakeholder in the decisions of the nuclear power station and whether new reactors are built and things like that. And they actually have a, a right of veto. So if the community doesn't, doesn't think that this should be done, then it's not done, which is really interesting. Um, the other thing, so Alkiloto 3 has just come online in, just looking at my date here, April 2023. It started full regular production. Um, and that's after an 18 year delay. So it was supposed to go, it was um, approved in 2005 and it's just come online in 2023. And one of the key reasons was there were some safety concerns around it. And basically, the regulator in Finland said, no go, 
until you can prove otherwise that this is safe to go. So the commercial imperatives do not rule the day. The safety imperatives rule the day. Yes, absolutely. And there's a lot of media um, and and stuff online that basically says, you know, this this has gone way, way over budget, as you could imagine, with an 18-year delay and cost blowouts and everything. But um, the safety regulator, which is the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority in Finland, just basically said, no go. Um, and it's sort of interesting because for Finland, as Richard said, they used to get about 60%, I think, of their coal from, from Russia. So they don't want to rely on Russia to get coal to, to or, or produce or. electricity. Um, but they're also marketing this, or I don't know whether marketing's the right word, but also advertising this as um, one of the greatest single climate acts in Finland. So they're, they're going to nuclear power to tr- um, address the climate change issues. Well, also, they're up to, I think, on EVs, I think, aren't they over 50% now, I think? Yeah, so they're very, very advanced. Um, but as, as we sort of said, you know, taking the... And, and I think when we had this conversation in Australia, I just feel that there's a lack of maturity. Yes, there's been some pretty awful um, incidents around nuclear power and there's been some lessons learned, but there's some countries that are really, really doing it well that we could learn from. And I don't think you have to start from scratch to to be able to plan for that. But one of the key key takeaways for, for Finland was that, that final disposal and, um, you know, they, they basically go from reactor safety and the management of the spent fuel it's actually all done on site in Eriochi at the at the facility, um, so it's um, disposed of in in sealed, encapsulated steel containers, and then um, finally disposed dip- disposed of or just um, put in in the bedrock. Yeah, down a quite a decent distance. Oh, down. very very distant distance down. Um, if but you they, really they, they, they specifically dug that out for the purpose of containing. Spent fuel rods. Fuel. And it's so far down that the, the, the background radiation and all those sorts of things is, is That's right. not irrelevant. This is monitored and they've got QA systems in place to monitor their staff for safety regulate, you know, for um, radiation exposure. They also do community testing and stuff like that. I have been down the, into the nuclear power side and um, you get kitted up in all your thing. You go down in a very, very, um, like a bus sort of thing and... Very interesting as a geeky engineer. Well, you compare that to the way in which you might remember the low-level radiation storage facility we vaguely had, a, had a, 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 a consideration of in Victoria, you might recall that. And so far as I know, our low-level radiation is still being stored in drums out in the open in various places and we, never have, we don't actually have a way of disposing of it and we've, we've just withdrawn from the whole thing. So sort of away and forgotten. Yep. Well, we haven't done anything about it, so I presume it's just accumulating in the wrong places around the place. Um, and yet, if you look at the way the Finns do it, you say, we've got a problem, let's think it through and let's, not, and let's get it right and do it properly the first time. And it is that very much precaution-based approach. It's not a risk-based, you know, target level of safety approach. You, it's you it's either not... right and you proceed or it's, it's not there and you don't go any further until... It's fixed. It's fixed. Um, which I think is a very, and as I said, we went into to Finland in 1990 and the power station have been there for a long time since then. And Ultima, one of my host dads, was the safety manager there and um, they were passionate about it. It was safety first at all costs for both their workers and, and the community as a whole. Yeah, it is rather interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is the second time you've been back, I believe. I've been back three or four or five times to Finland. It was a, a, a life-changing experience exchange. Um, and, um, yeah, I've taken my husband. He's been to the nuclear power station. He did say to me that probably not a, a day out for the two girls at 10 and 7, but, you know, maybe next time I take them back I can get them involved in that. But we might do the drive by the Realma shipyards and have a look at the new spirit of Tasmania is being built. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, it is fascinating, isn't it? It's fascinating that the Tasmanians, when they went scouring the planet to build ferries, um, basically decided on Finland. It does tell you a bit about the society and the culture as a whole, and it 
It does reflect a bit on the Nordics generally. I mean, as I said, I was at the um, AMPI conference, the Australasian Marine Institute, as a keynote speaker, and um, the majority of the women marine pilots were Nordics, I've got to say that. Um, right. And that was just an obvious thing. And they talk about particularly well-educated and competent people who just just realised just how, how obvious it was. It's just part of their life, you know. I mean, you go, you jump on a ferry between Finland and Sweden, you jump on a ferry between Estonia and, and Finland, you know. That's just getting around on ships is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> So I hope you found that interesting. That's sort of just a little bit of a takeaway that um, I had from my time in Finland. And um, as an engineer, you know, I I always recoil a little bit when we don't even seem to be able to have a nuclear power debate um, in Australia. That's um, there's a lot of good stuff happening out there, and and I think that we can learn from other cultures and other places as well. Uh, I think the Finns, particularly in their educational program, it's, um, I used to sort of, uh, one of my former lives, I sort of started the education branch in the uh, Victoria Division of Engineers Australia. Um, and getting the engineers interested in education, the philosophy of education, I found it quite a difficult thing to do. Um, and I've always, always been remarkably impressed with the Finns. I forget which Australian university's got a Finnish uh, connection, actually, because I remember seeing the advertised at Melbourne Airport when I was coming out one time. OK, um, not sure. I can't remember, but one, one of the Australian universities has. There you go. So thank you for joining us again and we'll be back next time with hopefully another interesting podcast. Thank you.